Hello and welcome to the WCOM Basics Differential Equation series. This video is going to go over second order non-homogeneous uh, differential equations. So in the last couple of videos we've been going over um, equations that, that take on this form. However, f of, there's no um, f of t, uh, f of t is just zero. So there's a number of different um, equations that f of t could be. Uh, three main ones that we're going to look at are exponentials, uh, sinusoidal, and polynomials. So our, our solution, x as a function of t, our solution x as a function of t is going to be a combination of two linearly independent uh, solutions. Uh, two linearly independent kind of solutions that we'll see uh, how to get to uh, in a minute. Uh, so we have yc, which is the complementary, or we have x sub c, which is the complementary solution, and we have x sub p, which is the particular solution. Uh, the complementary solution we already have solved for in the past, which is just all you do is set f of t equal to zero, you find the characteristic equation uh, based, based on your uh, a, b, and c, and then you solve for your roots, and then it's just x sub c equals um, e, c1 e to the r, r1 t plus c2 e to the r2 t. Um, of course, c1 and c2 uh, may or may not be solvable based on if you have uh, initial conditions or not. Um, but we already know how to do that, so we're just going to put that to the side until we solve a, an example. Uh, what we're going to focus on now is uh, the particular solution. Uh, so the, the method we're going to use to f solve for x sub p is called a method of undetermined coefficients. So, so um, if we have... So I've set up a little uh, chart here. Um, so basically our guess for, for x sub p is going to be based on what your f of t is. So if we have an exponential, if we have an exponential, it's just going to be some constant a and then e to the kx. Um, and that's just a, a general case. We'll see a, a case where e to the kx is not uh, linearly independent to uh, x to our uh, complementary solution, and that's going to cause some trouble, but there's an easy way around that. Um, and we're just going to solve for a, and that will give us, uh, that will ideally just leave us with two. Uh, two constants that we need to solve being c1 and c2, which we'll solve for it with initial conditions, if given. Um, and so if f of t is cosine or sine, or any kind of combination of cosine and sine, where you're adding or subtracting the two, we're going to have our particular solution is going to be a combination of cosine and sine. So we're going to have a cosine of kx plus b sine of kx. And we're going to see where we need that because we're uh, uh, taking derivatives on x. So we don't want to kind of lose any information here. And then we just solve for a and b, and then we're done. And um, if it's a polynomial, we just uh, have Keep our uh, keep our x to the n's and x to the whatever n minus one, and we solve for a, b, c, or however many uh, terms are in your polynomial. So, without further ado, let's get into uh, an example. And. So this looks really messy, but before I, I jump into this, exa this example, uh, it's worth noting that 
um, solving for your particular solution follows uh, linearity because of uh, the superposition principle that every uh, every solution to a, a linear uh, system is also going to be linear. So we have so in this case we have kind of three parts. Our exponential, our polynomial, and our sinusoidal. Um, so, so we're going to have three particular solutions. So, uh, right off the bat, let's just solve our uh, complementary solution. So, just pull out your characteristic equation and solve for R1 and R2. So this is our, our Y sub C, and sorry, I've kind of flipped the variables on you. So now instead of X as a function of T, which, what you might be, which is what you might be used to in like a kind of physical sense, we just have Y as a function of X, but that doesn't change anything really. Um, so Right, we have this. Let's hop into our first solving for our x sub p1, which is our first particular equation, which is going to come from e to the 3x. So what we're going to do, we, we have our educated yes from the method of undetermined coefficients, which is just a e to the 3x. And what we're going to end up solving is, um, if we just ignore these, so we so solve for y double prime minus 4y equals e to the 3x. So that's just going to give us our, our y, uh, our y particular solution number one. So that's what I've done here, and we can divide throughout by e to the 3x, and every, every single time you do this, um, it's just going to cancel out real nicely. And if, it, if things don't cancel out, like you have a, a factor, you have some kind of x in here that you don't want. You've done something wrong in your derivative step. So we can divide throughout by e to the 3x. And once we've done that, we can solve for a. And so a is just 1 fifth. And plugging this 1 fifth into our y, p, uh, y sub p comma 1, we have our first particular solution to this equation. And now you've, you probably see why I've made such a messy equation. It's because it involves all three of the uh, basic kind of equations that you might encounter. So similarly, we're just going to solve for our polynomial uh, particular equation. So I found the first and second derivative of our um, of our undetermined coefficient form of yp2. Um, so we're just going to ignore these two and uh, look for, uh, solve for yp2. So I'm going to put, uh, right, if that wasn't clear, I'm just going to put uh, yp2 double prime here, uh, yp2 here times 4, of course, and then equal that to um, x squared minus x. So yeah, um, after plugging this in, you, we can uh, isolate the terms with x squared and x, knowing that um, since we only have one x squared term here, uh, and one x term on each side, and each of them correspond to a or b, which is very nice. We can solve for a and b, and they both equal, in this case, negative one-fourth. So um, we're just going to plug that right into our 
second particular equation and move right on along. So uh, for our third particular equation, remember we want a combination of sine and cosine so that we don't lose anything when we uh, uh, take the derivative of it. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and find the second derivative. And then we're going to ignore these first two um, terms in our right-hand side and put just plug in and solve for y. So I'm running out of space here a little bit, but here we have our y double prime minus 4y. And so we're just going to simplify this algebraically and see if we can solve for a and b. So all of our, um, all of our sines and cosines have, have come together and we can see that minus 13a has to equal 1, so a equals A equals negative 1 over 13, and um, B has to equal 0 since there is no cosine on the other side. So um, and our Y was this, so we just have uh, Y, YP3. Yeah yp3 is equal to negative 1 over 13 sine of 3x. And so adding all these four equations up, that is the solution to y as a function of x. So that's basically a very uh, broad, encompassing example of a second order non-homogeneous uh, differential equation. However, there was no really hitch going along the way, so I'm just going to show you one example of when you might have a hitch and um, show you how to get around it. So here's the uh, equation. It's much simpler. However, you and it's and the uh, complementary part is going to be the same as our last example for the sake of easy. And um, you'll notice that we have one term that is c one e to the two x, and our uh, function over over that is making it non-homogeneous is also e to the two x, and those two are not linearly independent, so we're going to run into some problems. I'm going to show you the problem we would run into if we just try to solve this using uh, the base case for the method of undetermined coefficients. And so if you notice, we go through the whole step, all the steps, and we just get a vanishing thing over here and uh, e to the 2x uh, can never equal 0. So we, don't re we, uh, we have this inconsistent system. So what, how we're going to fix this is just by um, for kind of forcing yp to be linearly dependent from our yc. adding an x in there. And so now we can just go through, solve for yp.
and it gets fairly messy because of the product rule, but uh, hopefully that will all simplify once we plug in our y, y p double prime and y into this. So yeah, all I've done is multiplied yp times 4. And we can already see that these two, those two cancel each other out. And what else? We just have, uh, so 4a must equal 1, and therefore a equals 1 fourth. And so y, yp. is just equal to that, and yeah, that's all you need to solve if, if um, this happens to be uh, linearly dependent to something in your complementary solution. And that's about all you need to know is to solve second order non-homogeneous uh, solutions. If you want more practice, you can visit our website uh, and purchase our differential equations book. Uh, you can find a link to our website here, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and of course check out the rest of the videos in this basics playlist. Um, go on over to the next video if you would like to, and I'll see you there.